Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Combe and I get to speak with Dr. Liz Lister today. How are you, Dr. Liz? Doing well, thank you. How are you? Uh, doing great. You look terrific, by the way. Thank you so much. Always good so to do see you. you. I am glad that you're here today because I hate to sound dumb, and I suppose I could look it up in an encyclopedia somewhere, but I, w I just wanted you to give me some information about my liver. Now, I know I've got two kidneys. I know what they do, kind of, sort of, what they do, um, but I'm not sure, other than putting it with onions, what a liver does. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. Well, that's a wonderful question. The liver is the largest gland in the body. Now. Yep. It is absolutely a very large organ. It sits on the right side underneath the diaphragm, but it really crosses over the middle of the body, even across the midline a little bit. So it sits on this side of on the right side of the body, but it's so big that it even goes across the middle. Isn't that what, interesting? What what does it actually do? It is one of the biggest filters in the body. It has blood flowing through it at all times in large quantities. And it's filtering. It's filtering the blood for bacteria. It's filtering the blood for any for any other foreign particles that might have gotten in through the gut. Okay, so from foods that we eat. Uh, air that we breathe, it's one of the major scrubbing, cleaning organs of the body to help detoxify our environment, which it's a, it's, and it's open for business 24-7. Well, it? everything's I'm... open for business in my body 24-7. <laughs> which is uh, why, which is why you, they which kind is... of shut down most of the time. Which is why you <laughs> and I know that we have two kidneys, John, because we're open for business 24-7. Uh, but I, I have a, a question about livers. I, um, I have actually some friends who uh, were living uh, uh, kidney donors, uh, and they were young women. And it was very unusual, but apparently a lot of people do that. But you, a kidney doesn't grow back. I understand, though, that liver people who give liver transplants, is it true that the liver does grow back and regenerates in, uh, yes. in the body as well? Yes, it has a huge capacity for regeneration and regrowth under the right circumstances, of course, in a healthy person. Uh, and so it, let me also tell you, in addition to the filtration, that's one of the three major functions. Another one is producing bile. That's probably the number one product that the liver produces. And that, of course, is very important to detoxification. It goes into the gut and it helps with binding a lot, not just toxins, external toxins, but also waste products. Because the third last, the third major of the top three functions of the liver is involved in metabolism. So carbohydrate, fat, protein, whatever it is, the liver is involved in metabolizing it. And when our bodies and cells are working and metabolizing, we produce waste products from just that normal natural process. And so the bile and the which is produced by the liver is one of the major ways of binding those byproducts and eliminating them from the body. So now forgive me for taking us off on a little bit of a tangent here, but you said uh, it's related to metabolism. Is this this, by the way, sounds like an organ that's pretty darn important. It's doing all these different things. But the metabolism made me think of weight loss. I'm always thinking of weight Correct. loss. Um, so to what degree is the liver involved, a, a, a well-functioning liver involved in weight loss? Oh, my gosh. Well, it's, it's basically indispensable for a nice, stable body weight that a person can work on and manage with normal, reasonable efforts. So the blood sugar and fat, sugar and fat conversion into each other is very regulated by the liver. The liver responds to other hormones. For example, the liver responds to thyroid hormone and directly in response to thyroid is the cholesterol production. 
So again, that's under the fat metabolism. And the liver is where cholesterol is made and packaged up and sent out to the rest of the body to support other cell functions. That's where that stuff comes from. Oh. So, so I, this is, I'm glad I asked because this is fascinating stuff. So, so again, another probably dumb, very basic question. <laughs> I know how the, you know, the, the blood flows from the lungs to the heart or the heart to the lungs and back again and, and all that stuff. How, where's the liver connected? Where's the liver get Ooh, all this blood great. from and where's it send it to? Okay, that's a fantastic question, John, actually, because imagine when we, okay, so the answer to your question is the blood flows to the liver through the portal vein. And what does that mean? The portal vein receives the blood from all of the gut and the stomach. Oh. So when we've actually touched on this a little bit in some of our other videos, and that's what we call the first pass effect. So when we swallow something like a medication, maybe a hormone product or Tylenol or all, any, any type, anything that you swallow, any medication that you take orally, yeah. it goes into the stomach, it absorbs, and it goes from there straight to the liver uh. through the portal vein, processed through the liver, and then out to the rest of the body from wow. the liver back into the heart and then pumped out to the rest of the body. So it really is the main, the very first stage of filtration. It sure is. Wow. It sure is. Isn't that something? Now, mm -hmm. when, when I go to the doctor and he does all these blood tests, it, yes. is one of them for the liver? I, I, they all have Absolutely. Different yes. So the, just a basic, what we call a chemistry panel, or it could be a metabolic panel. And that has a few different names too basic metabolic panel, comprehensive metabolic panel. Yeah. Probably everybody listening has had that done at one sure. time or another because the metabolic panel tends to include blood sugar mm -hmm. right. as well as kidney tests. And then the comprehensive panel also has the liver enzymes. There's quite a few of them in that panel. And the liver enzymes are really remarkable. They respond, for example, even a glass of wine can make those liver enzymes increase a little bit and then metabolize that little bit of ingested alcohol, and then the enzymes will calm back down. Yeah. So it's really, really interesting, and that's absolutely correct. There's lots and, of and, ways to check. And you just mentioned uh, a little bit of wine and alcohol, and of course, all I know about liver is that if you drink too much, you get cirrhosis of the liver. That's all I, I've that's ever right. heard. Yeah. That's right, that's exactly right. It really takes a lot to, I'm not sure if the people, the, I don't want to give people the green light to drink a lot of alcohol. Right. However, the body and especially the liver's capacity, as we were saying, to regenerate and to do its job is really, really remarkable. So it really takes a lot, chronic, hmm. long-term. It turns out that, there, for example, there's also alcoholic hepatitis, which is not that common. Maybe there's fewer than, let's say, about 200,000 cases in the United States per year, which it, it's a big number. But compared to the millions of people who drink alcohol, it really, really takes a lot of chronic overuse yeah. of alcohol to, to get to that point. Well, I'll start so, that. Yeah. So uh, in, general, in general, if uh, people have gotten through their uh, uh, 30s and 40s without any liver problems, because I don't know too many people that I've ever known uh, who had we're dealing with a liver problem of some kind. There's always something else with kidneys or gallstones or all those other kind of things. That um, uh, it looks like if you don't have something that you get early in life, either through genetics or through uh, accident, that the liver is pretty durable. Uh, uh, and as we get older, are there things that generally people should look out for with the liver if they've had a normal healthy liver? or uh, are liver problems the exception to the rule? Liver problems are not that common, fortunately. Again, the liver has such a capacity for healing itself and regeneration. What we can do is we can do our best choices to avoid toxins as much as we can. I mean, there's some degree to which we cannot. And then also, as I was mentioning, there's some degree that it's just the, nor the normal natural processes in our bodies. 
just normal metabolism has byproducts that the liver helps us excrete and get rid of uh, out of the body between the liver and the kidneys. Yeah. You, you mentioned the gallbladder very briefly just now. Yeah. So I thought I would just mention, so people have an idea in their minds of how this relates. The gallbladder is, it looks like just like a little small water balloon and it's nestled underneath. So we got this liver on the right side and the gallbladder is nestled underneath and the duct out of the gallbladder joins with the duct out of the liver. And that is how the bile goes into the gut and helps with digestion and detoxification and elimination. Yeah. Hmm. This has been absolutely eye-opening for me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Great. I appreciate our livers. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.